Hey, welcome back. This is COC 1. We're dealing with uh, four, chapter 4, um, uh, 4.5 is about limits at infinity, which you could think of as sort of the end behavior of a graph. So uh, let's get in here and take a look at what's going on today. Okay, so first, it's basically all about end behavior. Okay. Alrighty then. Um, so let's look at an example. We have the limit of 4x plus 3 all over 2x minus 1. And so the thing that's going to be a little different is underneath the limit, we're going with x towards infinity. Okay. But we can also uh, go in the other direction, like x going towards negative infinity. So uh, either case is kind of of interest for us here. And we could do a table, right? So kind of uh, in parentheses, maybe a table of values. And just experiment and see where it goes. So we need x values going to infinity. So usually you just pick a sequence of values like uh, 10, 100, 1,000, something like that. 10, 100, 1,000. And then uh, plug those values into the 4x plus 3 over 2x minus 1. Um, which I kind of already did with my calculator being dead. I had to do it beforehand. So here are the numbers I got. 3, so it looks like it's getting really, really close to 2. Okay. I think it's 2. Um, you try the other one. So this time you want a sequence of numbers going to negative infinity. So you can try like negative 10, negative 100, etc. Negative, well, I guess I put 100 twice there. So negative 1,000. Um, okay, and then we plug those into our calculator and uh, for a 4x plus 3 over 2x minus 1. And you get uh, like 1.76 for the first one, and then 1.975 for this next guy, and then 1.9975. So it looks like it's going to the same place, right? It looks like it's also going to 2. Okay, so um, that's the kind of thing we're going to be investigating here in this section. Uh, you may have already investigated a bit with uh, pre-calc where you're talking about the end behavior of polynomials. So you have like this kind of polynomial that would go um, to negative infinity in both directions, or you'd have this kind of polynomial okay, that goes to uh, negative infinity to the left and positive infinity to the right. Um, so you, you've talked about this probably before, whether you know it or not. Anyways, uh, in the calc land, we, of course, again, will have the strict definition. I'm not going to uh, test you on it or anything, but just be aware that it exists. If you have any issues, you can always run back to this strict definition and do some more investigation if everything goes wrong. Uh, so the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals some number l if uh, for every epsilon greater than zero, uh, there um, uh, exists an m value greater than zero such that um, if x is greater than this m value, then uh, the distance between f of x and l will be less than epsilon. Okay, so the, the picture, the pictorial version of this would be that, um, okay, you have some limit l here, and then uh, for any epsilon ball around it, epsilon uh, interval around l, you could go out far enough and all the x values will be within that epsilon distance of l. Okay. So uh, maybe pick this as your m value that corresponds to that epsilon. And maybe before it was like going crazy, but then as soon as you get to m, it's going to be within that epsilon. Okay. So maybe it chills out and it starts doing that. Okay. Um, likewise, you can have the, uh, the negative infinity version, which is just going in the other direction. Um, so uh, say to the other uh, limit of f of x as x goes to negative infinity um, equals l. If for 
every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n less than zero such that um, this time, if uh, x is then less than n, uh, then the distance between f of x and l will be less than that epsilon value. Okay. So pictorially, it's just the other direction, right? So it's um, we have some limit l, and then there's a interval around l such that uh, or so if we go out far enough, the graph will, will be in, in this sort of funnel area. Okay, so here's our n. So maybe in this direction, this time it's doing something crazy, and then it gets to n and it starts behaving. Okay, that's all. It's, that's all this limit thing is kind of saying. Um, it's re, it's basically uh, the horizontal asymptote is what we're kind of talking about here. Um, so we can define the horizontal asymptote in terms of limits. Um, so most people are familiar with the vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is basically a, a horizontal line such that the um, graph gets really, really close to that line as it goes to either plus infinity or negative infinity. So maybe you'll have something like this, and then it gets really, really close to it. Okay. Um, well, you've dealt you've dealt with the horizontal asymptotes when you've dealt whenever you've dealt with uh, exponential decay. Okay, it's just you don't see the horizontal asymptote. It's on the it's on the uh, x-axis there. Okay, um, y equals zero is the horizontal. So you should have seen that in pre-calc. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so anyways, um, the line y equals l uh, is a horizontal asymptote. If uh, we have one of those uh, limits going to L, okay, so if uh, the limit of f of x as x goes to infinity goes to L, or the limit of f of x as x goes to negative infinity goes to L. Okay, so before, um, with the vertical asymptotes, you can basically just set the denominator equal to zero, and you'll have your vertical asymptotes. Um, if you're dealing with a rational function. But here, um, it's more of a limit thing. Okay? Um, there, there's going to be workarounds. So it's, the limit will become pretty easy to figure out. But uh, OK, so anyways, we'll get there. Uh, here's section four coming at you. Um, evaluating these limits. Limit evaluation. And uh, the usual limit rules will apply when the limit exists. So uh, if the limit of f of x and uh, the limit of g of x exist, disregarding you know, where, they, where they're going to, then you can apply the old limit laws. Then uh, you can apply the, I'll just call them the general limit laws. And uh, what are those limit laws? Stuff like the limit of, as x goes to infinity, of f of x plus g of x. You can figure that out just by taking the individual limits, right? So that's just equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x plus the limit as x goes to infinity of g of x. And then likewise, uh, I'm not going to list them all, but um, the limit of a product is equal to the product of the limits, that sort of stuff. g of x is equal to the limit of f of x times the limit of g of x uh, as x goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, uh, etc. Right? So etc for etc. Um, okay, so uh, what else is important? Um, some, some limit laws that we will be using. Um, so that was part one. Um, given R is a positive uh, rational number 
and C is any real um, the limit uh, as X goes to infinity of um, C all over X to the R will equal zero and then also the limit as X goes to negative infinity of C all over um, X to the R is zero as well. So uh, typically you want, you know, uh, the, the types of limits you'll be looking at will be um, stuff like this, limit as X goes to infinity of three all over X to the fourth, you know. Um, if you think about it in terms of a sequence of values, you know, you're going as x to infinity is a 10, 100, 1,000, whatever. Um, the fact that it goes to zero makes sense in this, in this chart, right? So you'd have 3 all over 10 to the fourth, 3 all over 100 to the fourth, 3 all over 1,000 to the fourth. So what you're getting is like 0 0.00000003, 0 0.00000000000. 000 000 000 000 000 um, it's getting really, really close to zero. And um, it'll do the same thing if you take it from the other direction. Um, we'll limit as x goes to infinity of negative infinity, rather. Um, it's, it's just that in that case, you're approaching zero from the left. So you'll have like negative 0 0.00003, negative 0 0.00000003, etc. Okay, but ultimately, they both go the same place okay, is what, kind of what we're trying to get at. Okay, um, also then uh, some other limits that we should uh, know are these exponential type guys. Um, so uh, exponential types. And uh, you'll see these guys like the limit as x goes to infinity of um, e to the negative x, right? So what is that? It's going to be the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 all over e to the x, and you're putting in numbers like 10, 100, 1,000, so you have e to the 10, 1 over e to the 10, 1 over e to the 100, 1 over e to the 1,000. It's just going to get really, really small, really, really quick. Um, the other one then, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the x also will go to 0, uh, because this time you're putting in negative uh, exponents. So in the in the chart, it'd be like negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000. So e to the negative 10 is the same as 1 over e to the 10. And then e to the negative 100 is the same as 1 over e to the 100. So essentially that thing will, will go to zero as well. Okay. Okay, so let's look at some... Uh, some problems here in this section. Uh, so some examples. The limit as x goes to infinity of 4 plus 3 over x. Okay. Um, the limit of 4 is 4. The limit of 3 over x from above, that thing is going to go to 0. So we can um, just say, okay, this is uh, 4. Right. So this this part, usually, I mean, that's not standard notation there, but uh, just to let you, the, the student, know that that part of it is going to zero. That's kind of a teacher notation for that. Um, let's look at another. So the limit as x goes to infinity of x all over x squared minus 1. This thing right here, if you look at it, is uh, what they call indeterminate form. If you put, if you just look at the top as x and you take x to infinity, um, the, the equation y equals x is a, a, lot, a diagonal through the origin. So as x goes to infinity, the y values you know, are going to go uh, to infinity as well. So the top would be infinity, and downstairs you have uh, a parabola, right, um, shifted down one. So as x goes to infinity, y is also going to infinity on that case too. And that form is called indeterminate. And we probably saw the zero over zero types way back when we introduced limits. Okay, so um, in this case, the 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 uh, um, the uh, way to deal with it 
is to divide top and bottom by the high degree term. Okay, so if you look at all the terms, the high degree term is x squared. So I'm going to divide top and bottom. In other words, multiply by 1 over x squared in the top and bottom. Okay. Okay. So this will equal the limit as x goes to infinity of x over x squared all over x squared over x squared, and then minus 1 over x squared. Okay, so this will be the limit as x goes to infinity. Now you want to simplify it, so you'll have 1 over x all over 1 minus 1 over x squared. And uh, when you take the limit as x goes to infinity, this part will be 0. This part will be 0. So the, the limit of... Uh, bunch of parts is the the limit of the individual parts so long as those parts exist right so so in this case they all do um, those are going to zero so what do you end up with you end up with zero over one minus zero which is the same as zero okay? zero over one which is zero okay so that's a standard uh, practice for evaluating these types of limits but but truthfully and what it comes down to is just uh, taking kind of the first two terms that you see, the high degree terms in the numerator and denominator, and then uh, figuring out that limit. Okay, So um, instead of going through that whole rigmarole, it's equivalent to just, and I haven't proved it's equivalent, but I, I suspect it's equivalent because it's never failed for me. Um, just write it as x over x squared. So you just take the, the two high degree terms Okay, from above, and then uh, take the limit of that thing, and you should get your answer. Okay, so here the limit will be 1 all over x, and of course that goes to 0. Okay. Um, so uh, similarly, uh, let's see uh, another example. Limit as x goes to infinity of 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 all over 5x uh, squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay. So again, the trick is to just pick off the high degree terms and take the limit of that. Okay. So this limit will be the same as the limit as x goes to infinity. I mean, it's equivalent to just dividing everything by x squared. It's kind of what I'm trying to say, so don't overthink this. It's just a shortcut. Okay. So you replace it with that, and then you simplify it. You'll have 3 over 5, and then the limit of a constant is just the constant, so you just end up with 3 fifths. Okay. So it's pretty simple. Let's look at another one. Um, limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed minus 2x plus 1 all over x squared plus 1. Okay. So again, you're just picking off the high degree parts. And... Uh, You'll have the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed all over x squared, which is the limit as x goes to infinity of x. And where does that go as x goes to infinity? Well, x, the, the function y equals x, is just the diagonal through the origin. So as x goes to infinity, this thing is going to infinity. So that will be infinity. Um, Likewise, if you d if you took the limit in the other direction of this thing, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x cubed minus 2x plus 1 all over x squared plus 1. Um, that's the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x. And then as x goes to negative infinity, um, x goes to negative infinity, basically. So as you go in the other direction, then the y values are going to go lower and lower and lower and lower. Okay. Um, in general, uh, for figuring out limits of polynomials, like this guy, um, it just comes down to the leading coefficient and the degree of the polynomial. So um, basically it will equal one of two things all the time. So if you have, in this case, it's going to equal infinity, positive infinity. But in general, the limit as x goes to infinity of some polynomial will say a sub n x to the n plus a sub n x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a sub 0. 
this will equal one of two things, right? So it'll equal infinity or it equal negative infinity. And it equals infinity if um, uh, n is uh, odd and uh, a sub n is positive or <laughs> or n is even and a sub n is positive. Uh, it'll be negative infinity if n is uh, odd and a sub n is negative um, or if n is even and a sub n is um, uh, negative. Okay. It all goes along with the, the pictures if you've studied that back in pre-calculus um, as uh, you have those pictures, right? So uh, positive leading coefficient and even degree will give you a picture like that. So n even um, a sub n greater than zero. Um, so as x goes to infinity, this will also go to infinity. And then uh, this picture is when n is odd and a sub n is also positive. And then the, the negative cases, of course, um, whoops, sorry, I butchered that picture. Um, this is when n is even, but a sub n is less than zero. And then... Uh, this is all stuff I teach in pre-calc. I'm just kind of re, re uh, in case you missed it. If n is odd and a sub n is less than zero. Okay. okay, so similarly then you'll have that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of a polynomial, let's just call it p of x this time, is equal to infinity um, or negative infinity, and it'll be infinity if uh, n is even and a sub n is greater than zero. It'll be infinity if n is odd and a sub n is less than zero. Okay, so there's those two cases there. And then uh, negative infinity if uh, n is even and a sub n is less than zero or n is odd and a sub n is greater than zero. So hopefully I, I've beaten that to death. Okay. Okay. So getting back to our limits that we're working with, let's look at another example. The limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 3x uh, to the fifth minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 all over, let's say, um, x squared minus 3, right? Okay, so to evaluate the limit, you're just taking the high degree terms, picking those off, and you have your, and you have your limit as x goes to negative infinity, uh, negative 3x to the fifth over x squared. That'll be the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 3x cubed. Okay. So negative leading coefficient and odd degree. So negative leading coefficient and odd degree. And we're going in the negative infinity direction. So that means it's going to positive infinity. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's look at uh, one with some roots. So sometimes they'll throw in some square roots or something, which is kind of weird. So x going to the negative infinity of 2x plus 1 all over the square root of x squared minus x. Okay. So again, you can still play this game. It just takes a, a little, you have to be a little careful. Um, so here we go. I have the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 2x all over the square root of x squared. Um, the problem with the square root of x squared is it's not equal to x, right? So it's the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 2x all over the absolute value of x, 
right? And then we recall the absolute value of x is equal to negative x if x is less than 0, and then x if x is greater than or equal to 0. So we have that memorized. Um, so as x goes to negative infinity, you want to replace the absolute value of x with a negative x. So I have x going to negative infinity of 2x all over negative x. And so uh, this will become the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 2. Right? Oops, I wrote the answer there. I didn't mean to do that in the bottom. Okay, so I'll have negative 2, and then the limit will just be negative 2. Okay. So uh, let's look at another one of those. I think there was one on last year's test. Sure. Almost the exact same problem. Um, so the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x all over the square root of x squared plus 1. So again, we're, we're playing this game of just uh, circling the high degree parts. Okay. So we'll end up with the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x all over absolute value x, because it's square root of x squared. And then because we're going to negative infinity, I'm replacing uh, absolute value of x with negative x. And then um, that will just be the limit of negative 1, and the limit of a constant is just the constant. Okay. So if you're going in the other direction, then, uh, for example, um, if you're going the limit as x goes to positive infinity of this behemoth of a thing, and, you know, they can, they can try to trip you up a little bit and, you know, maybe write it as a fraction exponent. So let's say uh, x... Uh, I don't know, x, what the heck am I doing at this point, you know? x squared uh, plus 1 to the 1 half, uh, uh, you know, it's the same problem as above. You just have to kind of collect the exponent on the outside there. Um, we'll end up with the limit as x goes to infinity of x all over uh, x squared to the 1 half, which, of course, is absolute value x. If you rewrite the one-half exponent as a square root, you get the x square root x squared, which is absolute value of x. Okay, so x go to infinity of x over absolute value of x. Because this time we're going to positive infinity, x will equal x. Absolute value of x will equal x, excuse me. So you'll have x over x, which is the same as 1. And then the limit of a constant is just a constant. Okay, okay so I, I hope we beat that horse to death. Um, there are other versions of this, uh, so let me look at one, another weird one with a weird ex exponent involved. Limit as x goes to infinity of uh, 2 minus x to the 3 halves all over 2x squared minus 3. So again, you just play the game, okay? So we have our high degree um, variable terms here and here. Um, this will equal the limit as x goes to infinity of negative x to the 3 halves all over 2x squared. And then we can simplify that. So it's the limit as x goes to infinity of negative 1 all over 2x squared minus 3 halves. So 4 halves minus 3 halves is 1 half. Okay. And then as x goes to infinity, that's just going to go to 0. So that's just one of our, our rules about uh, way back here somewhere um, here. So given any R positive rational, which is positive uh, rational, um, the limit as X goes to infinity of C over X to the R. So in our case, R was like one half. Um, that thing's going to go to zero. If you don't believe me, you can always you know plug in 10, plug in 100, plug in 1,000, see where it goes um, using the chart, okay? Okay, um, I think that'll get us uh, moving in the right direction. Um, uh, let's look at some of the exponential versions. Of, of this uh, problem. So example, 
um, the limit of uh, 1200 all over 1 minus e to the negative t as t goes to infinity. Okay, so this expression here that you're seeing is the logistic equation, which is used in modeling the spread of disease. And uh, so you'll see it again later in differential equations and probably in Calc 2 as well. Okay, so uh, again, the limit of the whole is the limit of the pieces, so long as those pieces have limits. And in particular, um, the limit of 1,200 is just 1,200. The limit of 1 is just 1. And what this will come down to then is the limit uh, as t goes to infinity of e to the negative t. Okay. Um, we saw above that was one of our special limits uh, way, 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 way back in time. The limit of e to the negative x as x goes to infinity is 0. Uh, and that's, I think that's what we have here, right? Scrolling down, getting busy. Um, yeah, so if you put in t as 10, you'll have e to the negative 10, which is 1 over e to the 10. And if you put in 100, you'll have e to the negative 100, which is 1 over e to the 100. So you have 1 over something that's getting huge. That means it's going to 0. So that part of the limit does exist. And in fact, it goes to 0. So the overall limit will just be 1,200. Let's compare that then to this example as t goes to infinity of 1,200 all over 1 minus e to the positive t. Okay. So again, in this case, uh, the uh, denominator is kind of the, the deciding factor. And in this denominator, um, we have basically 1 minus e to the t. And so what is that thing? Let's kind of zoom in on just that, that denominator. What's going to happen there? Okay, if you put t equals 10, 100,000 uh, into e to the t, you're going to get a to the 10, e to the 100, e to the 1,000. So what are you getting? You're getting 1 minus infinity. In other words, you're getting uh, negative infinity out of this. This is one of the limits we could compute way back in the, the first limit chapter. We said it was L minus infinity always turns into minus infinity. Okay, so that denominator is getting huge on us this time. This thing is going to infinity. And basically, if you have an L over some type of infinity, uh, that's equal to zero. Right? And that's what, all, what, what the point of a lot of these polynomial ones are. Like if the limit as uh, x goes to infinity of 1 over x cubed well, that's just L over infinity, ultimately, right? Because you're putting big numbers into the denominator, and automatically that's going to go to zero. Um, right? Okay, so, so there's that uh, baloney. Um, one other thing we, we then worry about are the strict definitions for infinite limits and uh, interpreting that kind of stuff. So I think this is actually section five, but oh well infinite uh, limits at infinity. I just need to introduce the strict definitions for these. We've actually already done this uh, back here. Okay, so this is an infinite limit at infinity. And uh, we just need a definition for that. And basically it'll go like any number you can imagine, like 50,000, I can go out further on the number line and find an X value that will give me something bigger than that number you just imagined. And then when that happens, that is basically the definition of an infinite limit. So uh, a limit going to infinity, excuse me. So if then uh, we have the limit as X goes to infinity of F of X equal infinity, um, then uh, for uh, any m, any uh, big M greater than zero value that you provide me, there will exist uh, uh, an n value greater than zero such that um, if x is greater than n, then f of x will be greater than that value that you dreamed up. Okay. Then likewise, you can go in the other direction. If uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals negative infinity, then for any um, 
n negative value that you dream up, um, there exists uh, an n value greater than zero such that if x is far enough out beyond this n value, then uh, f of x will go below the provided n value. Okay. Oh, so the provided m value. So for any n value, there exists this m value. So I'm cheat a little. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and that, that pretty much does it. Uh, you can, uh, let's look at, okay, well, sure. Let's look at some more examples. Um, you probably have seen enough at this point, but just for my own completion and sanity, I'm going to provide some extra examples. If you want to watch along, you can. Um, this one's kind of weird because, again, it has that one-third power to it. So here I go. I'm going to collect the, the like, the high degree terms. Okay? And then uh, kind of rewrite the limit using that. So I'll have x all over x to the two-thirds. One-thirds times two is two-thirds. Um, then you can uh, subtract exponents. So x to the first minus two-thirds is x to the three-thirds minus two-thirds, which is x to the one-third. Um, that, that graph is like this. Okay. So as x goes to infinity, this thing is going to go to infinity as well. Um, okay, the, the book will do comparisons of these different poly, uh, rational uh, limits. And I think I've kind of already beat this to death. I just, in case you want to watch, you can. If not, that's fine, too. Um, I don't know how necessary this is because we've kind of already beat it to death. But here, here, there are three different types of limits, right? There's the one where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Um, there's the one where the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. And then there's the kind where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. And if you've studied uh, rational functions in pre-calc, you, ki you kind of think of uh, the horizontal asymptotes. So the first one, the horizontal asymptote is zero, so the limit will also be zero. But of course, you could always use this other method I've been advocating during this lecture, and, and that's just to pick off the high degree terms and then evaluate that limit, right? So it's the limit of 2x over 3x squared, which is the limit of 2 over 3x, which will be 0, okay? But that's just that horizontal asymptote you would have noted um, using the old uh, algorithm. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, okay? If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the answer to the second one is just going to be two-thirds. Okay? But again, you can use the method I've already been advocating to evaluate it. Okay? So there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. And then the last one, if the degree of the numerator exceeds the degree of the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay. Um, in this case, in our case, it'll go to either infinity or negative infinity. Um, so let's take a look. Limit of 2x cubed over 3x squared is the limit of 2x over 3. And of course, that's going to positive infinity. That's a, a line with a positive slope. So it's going to positive infinity. So that would be positive infinity. Okay, so those are the three types of... Uh, rational type limits. Um, I think we're good. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it at that and uh, shut up for a while and let you get back to your homework. Uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.